For decades, travelers heading from Long Island to Connecticut have stared across the narrow band of blue that separates them. A journey of only 20 miles, yet often a frustrating three-hour journey through New York City's tangled highways. Beneath that stretch of water, known as the Long Island Sound, lies one of America's oldest unbuilt dreams, a direct bridge or tunnel connecting the two shores. Imagine driving from Bridgeport to Port Jefferson in 20 minutes, instead of waiting in a ferry line or inching through Bronx traffic. Imagine a sweeping 14-mile bridge glinting in the sun, or a sleek tunnel burrowed beneath the waves, a new lifeline linking Connecticut and Long Island. It's a vision that has fascinated engineers and politicians for generations, inspiring studies, protests, and billion-dollar debates. Supporters call it transformative. Critics say it's fantasy. But as congestion worsens and climate threats grow, the question resurfaces with renewed urgency. Is it finally time to build the bridge? Today, let's delve into the $55 billion Long Island Sound Crossing. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Few regions in America endure congestion like Long Island. Home to more than 7.5 million people, the island's only road connections to the mainland pass through New York City's overburdened bridges and tunnels, the Throg's Neck and Bronx Whitestone among them. A single crash or construction delay can paralyze traffic for hours, with ripple effects stretching deep into Suffolk County. Across the Sound, Connecticut faces its own nightmare, the I-95 corridor, one of the nation's most congested highways. For those traveling between New England and Long Island, the only alternatives are ferries, slow, weather-dependent, and limited in capacity. A fixed crossing across Long Island Sound could change everything. It would create a direct east-west link between the New England interstate network and Long Island's highways, bypassing New York City entirely. Freight trucks could save more than 80 miles per trip. Commuters could slash hours off their journeys. Beyond convenience, a Long Island Sound Link promises resilience and opportunity, a vital evacuation route in hurricanes or disasters, and a powerful new corridor for trade, tourism, and regional growth. In essence, it's not just about saving time, it's about reshaping how the Northeast connects and thrives. The vision of a Long Island Sound Crossing dates back to the golden age of American highway building. In the 1950s and 60s, as interstates reshaped the nation, New York's master builder, Robert Moses, proposed the first serious plan, a six-mile cable-stayed bridge from Oyster Bay to Rye. His plan, part of his vast parkway vision, was quickly derailed by opposition from coastal communities and environmentalists. And by 1973, the federal government shelved it. Yet the idea never died. It resurfaced in the 1980s and 1990s with proposals for Bridgeport Port Jefferson and New Haven Port Jefferson routes. But all were abandoned due to cost and controversy. Then in 2017, Governor Andrew Cuomo revived the debate, commissioning WSP to study bridge and tunnel options. Found to be feasible, but extraordinarily expensive. Today, the Bridgeport-Port Jefferson route has resurfaced as the leading contender, backed by renewed private interest and ongoing discussions about whether this long-imagined link could finally become reality. Still only a vision on paper, the Long Island Sound Link represents an ambitious plan to connect Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Port Jefferson, New York, across roughly 14 miles of open water. Depending on its final configuration, it could take the form of a bridge, a tunnel, or a hybrid system combining both. Each carries its own engineering complexities, environmental trade-offs, and staggering costs, estimated between $16.5 billion and $55 billion. If built as a full bridge, the Sound Link would rank among the longest overwater crossings in the Western Hemisphere. It would feature a six-lane divided highway, with shoulders and emergency pull-offs designed to handle heavy commuter and freight volumes. The main span would likely use cable state or suspension bridge technology to maintain navigational clearance for large vessels, while approach sections could rely on viaducts and causeways to minimize dredging near sensitive coastal zones. Construction would begin with deep water caissons, 
vast watertight cylinders sunk into the seabed and filled with reinforced concrete. Tower foundations could extend over 100 feet below the surface, anchoring steel cables that suspend prefabricated deck segments lifted into place by heavy cranes. Embedded smart sensors would continuously monitor stress, wind, and vibrations, while low-glare LED lighting would minimize disruption to marine life. It would need to be designed to withstand winds exceeding 200 kilometers per hour, ice flows, and hurricanes, combining resilience with elegance. An all-tunnel configuration would remove visual and navigational impacts entirely by running beneath the seabed. Massive tunnel boring machines, some as large as a commercial airliner, would carve twin bores 100 to 150 feet deep, each carrying two or three traffic lanes. Cross passages every 500 feet would link the tubes for emergency access. The tunnel boring machines would launch from deep shafts on both shores, simultaneously excavating and installing precast concrete lining segments to stabilize the tunnel walls and prevent water intrusion. Sophisticated systems for ventilation, power, drainage, and fire suppression would ensure operational safety. Excavated material, millions of cubic yards of soil and rock, could be repurposed for shoreline reinforcement or artificial reefs. Though visually discreet and storm-resistant, the tunnel's extreme depth and engineering complexity would make it the costliest solution estimated to exceed $55 billion. The bridge tunnel hybrid represents a compromise between the two. Modeled on Virginia's Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, it would feature elevated bridge sections near the shore that transition into a submerged or bored tunnel across the sound's deep central channel. This configuration would preserve shipping lanes, reduce the number of tall bridge pylons, and mitigate some environmental and aesthetic concerns. Construction would involve both marine piling and immersed tube techniques, connecting prefabricated tunnel elements placed along the seabed to bridge viaducts above. The hybrid would still demand advanced waterproofing, joint sealing, and transition infrastructure, but it offers a balance of cost, visibility, and functionality. Estimated cost is approximately $35 to $40 billion depending on materials and environmental mitigation. Whichever design prevails, the SoundLink would require 10 to 15 years of construction, thousands of workers, and millions of tons of steel and concrete. It would stand among the world's great engineering achievements, alongside Denmark's Orson Link and the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, proving that even in one of America's most fragile marine environments, ambition and ingenuity can still find common ground. The SoundLink faces enormous hurdles, starting with its biggest, funding. With state budgets already stretched, neither Connecticut nor New York has committed financial support. The 2017 WSP study identified a toll-financed public-private partnership as the only feasible path forward, allowing private investors to build and operate the crossing for 30 to 40 years, recovering costs through tolls of $40 to $60 per car and higher rates for trucks. Supporters believe traffic volumes could make the project self-sustaining, but skeptics doubt such forecasts, warning that many drivers would continue using ferries or New York City routes. On October 14, 2025, Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont ruled out state funding entirely, calling the plan incredibly complicated and supremely expensive. By contrast, New York has expressed greater interest in exploring the idea, but without its neighbors' participation, the project cannot advance. Beyond financing, environmental and local resistance present additional barriers. The Long Island Sound supports over a thousand marine and bird species, and conservation groups warn that dredging and pile driving could destroy habitats and reverse decades of ecological progress. Communities in Bridgeport and Port Jefferson fear traffic, pollution, and visual disruption, while Connecticut's affluent Gold Coast residents oppose a bridge spoiling their ocean views. Economic analysts also question whether traffic demand can ever justify the enormous cost, leaving the SoundLink a technically possible but politically stranded dream.
Despite the hurdles, the potential rewards are enormous. If realized, the crossing could slash travel times between Long Island and southern New England by up to two hours, allowing drivers and freight haulers to bypass New York City entirely. It would ease congestion on the Bronx and Queens highway network, enhance regional trade, and provide a crucial evacuation route for Long Island during hurricanes or disasters. Economically, the project could generate tens of thousands of jobs during construction and inject billions into the economy through materials, logistics, and infrastructure spending. Some studies estimate long-term annual benefits of $8 to $10 billion, driven by faster travel, tourism growth, and higher property values. For now, the Long Island SoundLink remains a vision, technically feasible yet politically stalled. Neither state has committed funding, but as traffic congestion intensifies, and resilience becomes a national priority, the rationale for such a link grows stronger. Advances in tunneling, modular bridge construction, and environmental mitigation are making once impossible feats achievable. If ever built, the sound link would stand among the great engineering icons of the modern age, a bold symbol of ambition bridging two coasts and generations of American imagination. What do you think? Would this crossing ever come to life? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.